Are you someone who wants to be encompassed by a consistent feel good energy? What if I told you that the foods that you eat on a daily basis could actually provide you with the building blocks to ensure that you're producing the neurotransmitter and hormone responsible for this serotonin? Hi, I'm Jess, I'm a clinical nutritionist, and today we're talking all things and foods serotonin. I'm sure you're familiar with serotonin. It's like the number one neurotransmitter that people refer to as the happiness neurotransmitter. And while that is true, serotonin is actually a very calm, at ease, and at peace type of happiness. So while I actually think more of dopamine when it comes to a positively enforced motivation that gets you up to do something like exercise, dancing, etc., serotonin is what I believe allows you to look around the room with a glass half full perspective. Essentially, it is the complete opposite of irritability. So ensuring that we have adequate levels of serotonin is not only going to help us be at peace and not fret about the small things like those dishes in the sink, but it's also gonna make sure that we're getting adequate sleep because melatonin is actually produced from serotonin. So let's dive into the top nutrients that are required for serotonin synthesis, as well as the foods that you're going to find these in. So the number one nutrient that we need to make sure we're getting enough of in order to ensure proper serotonin synthesis is protein and adequate amounts of protein. Yes, protein, you would be surprised by how many people aren't meeting their daily protein requirements. And this is like a minimum protein requirement that you would need for essentially like laying in bed all day and not necessarily for optimal brain function activity or for making enough serotonin. So if you look at this chart here, you can see that tryptophan, an amino acid found in protein-rich foods, is the only precursor to serotonin. Since tryptophan can't be created by your body, you must obtain it from the foods you eat. So foods to focus on to ensure adequate protein can be from animal or plant sources, but it's additionally really helpful to consume protein foods that are relatively high in tryptophan in comparison to the other amino acids. Amino acids do this kind of strange, weird thing where they actually like compete with each other for absorption. So if you wanna get a higher amount of tryptophan, it's helpful to consume some foods that are naturally higher in tryptophan compared to the other amino acids. And some of these foods are poultry and fish. So chicken and turkey and fish like salmon and tuna are particularly high in tryptophan. The amount of protein that you need overall is gonna vary quite a bit depending upon your age age, sex, and activity level, but I like to have people shoot for like a bare minimum of 100 grams a day to ensure that they have enough to feel like their best selves and meet these requirements for a lot of functions that are taking place in the body. Number two, the next nutrient that's incredibly important for serotonin synthesis is carbohydrates. I've discussed this in some of my other videos on anxiety, but carbohydrates and tryptophan have an interesting tandem relationship where carbohydrates essentially help tryptophan cross the blood brain barrier. But these need to be the right form of carbohydrates. You wanna use slow burning whole foods carbohydrates. So some examples of this would be like root vegetables, maybe even something like legumes, but you definitely wanna avoid high glycemic carbohydrates from processed foods. If you're enjoying this video so far, then please make sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. It's the best way to support the content that I create. The next two nutrients we need for serotonin synthesis are minerals, iron, and zinc. As you can see here, these two minerals are needed to convert tryptophan to 5-HTP and 5-HTP to serotonin. Both iron and zinc have plant and animal sources of these foods, but the bioavailability of them in the foods is much higher in animal sources. And this is why these two nutrients are actually pretty common deficiencies with vegetarians and vegans. So my favorite source of iron are animal foods like meat and eggs. When you are consuming plant-based non-heme sources of iron, it's helpful to have that with vitamin C because that actually helps with the absorption of non-heme 
Team Iron. For zinc, my favorite sources of zinc are seafood, particularly things like oysters, but it's also gonna be high in other meats as well. Other sources of zinc are beans, nuts, and seeds. The next nutrient on the list is folate. Folate, otherwise known as vitamin B9, is a water-soluble vitamin, and it's needed to convert tryptophan to 5-HTP. Highest dietary source of folate is beef liver. Yes, beef liver. Beef liver is actually pretty high in many of the nutrients that we're discussing today, so if you are at all open to trying something like liver, please check out the link in the description below from a company who makes meat products out of liver where you would never even realize that it's in there. Other top dietary sources of folate are, of course, leafy greens. Fifth nutrient on the list is magnesium, and magnesium, as you can see here, is required for both the conversion of tryptophan to 5-HTP and 5-HTP to serotonin. One of the highest dietary sources and also one of my favorite sources of magnesium are pumpkin seeds. Pumpkin seeds are such a good snack. You can have them throughout the day. You can sprinkle them on your meals, like your salads or anything like that and they also contain a plant form of L-tryptophan. So they're kind of a double whammy for serotonin synthesis. The next nutrient is vitamin B6, and it is required for both steps in the serotonin synthesis pathway. Once again, liver is gonna be one of the highest dietary sources, but it's also along with chickpeas, so if you prefer hummus over liver pate, I totally understand. Seafood is also quite high in vitamin B6. The seventh nutrient on the list that's super important for serotonin synthesis that we cannot forget about is vitamin C. Vitamin C is needed to convert 5-HTP to serotonin. Obviously, citrus fruits are a great source of vitamin C, but some people don't realize that there are some low-carb vegetables like bell peppers, red bell peppers in particular, that are very high in vitamin C as well. So as you can see here, there are some overlapping threads with these foods. A diet providing a constant supply of the nutrients to ensure serotonin synthesis is going to be a diet that's high in, first of all, protein, particularly from animal foods and at least from seafood. It's gonna focus on low glycemic carbohydrates from whole food sources. It's gonna have adequate fiber, regular leafy greens, and also some pumpkin seeds trickled in there. Bonus points if you can eat something like liver. And if you enjoyed learning about the serotonin boosting foods, then you may want to check out this video here on dopamine boosting foods, because if you combine these two together, then your mood may just make it to the next level. And hopefully I'll see you in that one.